Tom McGregor, though, is an outstanding figure. Uh, he's not a figure of the left in American politics. I don't think he'd mind me saying that. He's a conservative man, a Texan, uh, who uh, has come to know and love China and has become, I think, the best pundit in China. And that's something to be. Tom McGregor joins me now. Tom, thanks for uh, being back uh, on the show. Uh, my condolences to you as a Texan for the uh, horrific events in your state over the last couple of days. Eight shot dead yesterday in a mall, seven mown down and killed uh, outside a homeless shelter elsewhere in Texas uh, this evening. Um, so my condolences uh, on that. The, the US is in a bad way before we turn to China. This is not a good time to right. be uh, telling everyone they should be like America. That is very correct. Uh, the, um, America has long been on a decline in the re past few years, perhaps probably for a decade or, or so. And what we're witnessing is an America in decline while we are also seeing a China on the rise. So a lot of times when empires are on the decline, they are the last to know um, that they are the ones on the decline because a long time they have gotten used to and accustomed to the, the fact that they can see, see themselves as an empire. And from that, they just assume that they can make that last for a long time to come. Uh, but with this decline, what's really going on is they are becoming more angry and upset and trying to take more gambles to stay on top. And as such, they are, there's a, a much higher likelihood that you will see much more bullying on the part of the Americans towards other countries, especially towards Europe. China, of course, doesn't uh, take uh, bullying. Um, as uh, mm -hmm. Dong Xiaoping said to uh, the then Prince Charles, the days when China took orders from foreigners are long gone. Uh, and yet they're still always trying to give China orders. Only the other day, uh, an American uh, official, senior official, uh, demanded that, uh, that Russia order, uh, that China tell Russia to get out of Ukraine, all the while shuffling more and more weapons into Taiwan. Uh, where you yourself uh, were visiting just last week. Um, yeah. Do the Chinese yeah. people and their leadership, uh, how unkindly do they take it to be lectured by foreigners well, in this way? Well, it's been, it's been long accustomed by many of, of the U.S. government to constantly uh, lecture other countries on what they should do per, according to America's perspective of uh, global governance. It's just been a long custom and, and of course, obviously the uh, uh, US government side has often told China what to do and China uh, uh, hears what is being said by the US government, but doesn't exactly always follow what the US government says. So let's say for example, in regard, uh, yes, I did visit Taiwan and it was a very interesting experience for me. But what was interesting was I discovered a lot of differences in Taiwan than what I'm seeing in the international and Western media. What I often see in the international and Western media is this sensationalism and these claims that China is going to have an imminent invasion on Taiwan and that war is soon going to happen. I mean, this is a constant theme that you'll see in the international media, especially in regards to Taiwan. But when I visited Taiwan, what really shocked me was the simple fact that most people are not worried about this sensationalism, that they were relatively calm, that they anticipate and believe that they can have peace with China. Okay, so with, with, them, with, with the US sending weapons to Taiwan, this has always been the case that they've always sent a lot of weapons. But if you take a closer look at the quality of those weapons that have been sent to Taiwan, they weren't, weren't exactly very good or high quality weapons. They weren't always very, they, a lot of times those weapons the US sent weren't really working. A lot of times it's just a show to make it look like the US is really helping Taiwan, 
But for those in the know, those who are experts know that a lot of those weapons being sent were not high quality and often they were not even working. OK, so a lot of this is just to show in regards to telling uh, China that that they're asking Russia to get out of Ukraine. Well, there's no surprise there. Well, it looks like uh, Ukraine is losing, and that is different than what the Americans and the Western media have been claiming, which is Ukraine is winning. If they are begging for Russia to leave Ukraine and trying to get China to help to persuade Russia to leave Ukraine, to me, that shows Ukraine is losing, not winning. What did the Taiwan people think uh, about visits from Nancy Pelosi and a succession of, of grandees from the United States? Did they, did they not see that as provocative behavior on the US? After all, well, the easiest way to guarantee a Chinese uh, recapture of the island is to persuade the Chinese that the Americans are going to make it impossible ever for Taiwan to return to the motherland. Well, that's also a very interesting analysis uh, and something we need to really explore that I had trouble understanding actually until I went to Taiwan and got to meet pe people there who are just who live on the island their entire lives. And another surprise that I discovered when I was there was when I talked to many people in Taiwan and asked them about Pelosi's visit or his eyes visit to, to the US, I was expecting them to be a little bit excited, maybe emotional because here uh, the media claims that they really love the USA and they worship the USA. So of course they would love Pelosi to visit. But a lot of times when I asked people from Taiwan, what really surprised me was they were like, I don't care, no big deal. Who cares? It's just Pelosi. We weren't really excited when she came. We were more surprised by how the international media was talking about Pelosi's visit. And of course, obviously, China re responded in a very strong way. And that definitely shocked many people from Taiwan. But the overall theme and consensus that I, I heard from many people in Taiwan was they really didn't pay closely attention to the Americans or even the U.S. foreign policy. Uh, Pelosi came, and then suddenly there's all these reporters from all over the world showing up in Taipei, and then they're blowing it up like this is now going to create a war with China and Taiwan, when to them it was just another American showing up, trying to show off. And also when I asked people about Zai's visit to the uh, U.S., they were like, oh, it's just a transit visit. She was, what's really more important is she went to Belize, and then she went to some of their Afri uh, South American friends. They actually thought that her visits to South America was more important than her visit to the United States. Now, Taiwan is officially in recession, uh, whilst Chinese oh, yeah. growth is multiplying and going to be, I think, four, if not five times greater than growth in the rest of the, the G7. Uh, I think four times greater than the United States. Taiwan is going in the opposite direction, and yet the U.S. is bullying it in relation to its semiconductor uh, industry. What does the U.S. want Taiwan to do? I'm not sure, to be honest, because uh, the economy in Taiwan, as you said, is, is disastrous right now. They reported a, over 3.02% drop in its GDP, GDP in the first quarter of this year. And it, it was actually noticeable. I, uh, we, our, our team, we went down to Kaohsiung. This is the major port city of Taiwan. We were expecting to see this really bustling city that was robust, that was a really happening city. And it was nothing more than a ghost town. We even showed up in Kaohsiung main station, right next to where their international port is. and. We couldn't find any shops that were open. A lot of places were shuttered. It was closed down. It was shocking to us because this is the major port city of Taiwan, and it's a dead zone. It was it was really disturbing. So what it shows to me is that the trade in Taiwan is getting shattered, destroyed, and it's a lot because of the U.S. foreign policy. They have put a lot of restrictions 
on trade with China. And so now Taiwan is in a very dangerous place economically and their chips. Who knows? Maybe the U.S. wants to control TSMC, which is a major manufacturer of semiconductors, because obviously they're not helping TSMC. It's really it was really quite disturbing as well to, to me. Uh, I, I was hearing stories from people like, for example, I've heard about Micron. They're doing major layoffs in Taiwan and the Asia Pacific region. Uh, they're producing they're involved with the chips manufacturing. So what exactly does America want? Maybe they want to destroy uh, Taiwan's high tech sector so then they can replace them and become and surpass Taiwan as a major high tech and science manufacturer. But this will not lead to success. By sabotaging your own friends, that creates a lot of mistrust. Now, uh, speaking of happening cities, uh, the last time we met was in the very happening city of Beijing. But the astonishing thing for me, and it had been 25 years uh, since I had been in Beijing, uh, was the, the wealth of the people. I was in a high street in which, I'm not exaggerating, a million people were there. There was a queue a mile long to get into every shop, just to get in to the shop, uh, to spend the money that the people uh, quite evidently had. There's even a Manchester United superstore on that street. Uh, and uh, and I, I spent a few shillings in there. Um, this incredible burgeoning of China, um, people on the whole must be glad that they are in China. Why don't the Taiwan people see that? Are they kept from that knowledge? Do they know that while they're in recession, China is booming? How do you keep them down on the Taiwan farm uh, when Paris is just across the straits? Sure. Well, that's also a good question. I think Basically, what you have is a society in Taiwan. Uh, you have people there who've grown up in their society, and they have long been told that China is this terrible and evil country, and that if they try to draw closer and, and have closer relations with China, then their lives will be miserable because then they'll be under the control of the Chinese government. So there is this constant prevailing sentiment that in Taiwan, no matter what happens, don't don't go politically closer to China. Now they can have business deals, but they separate the business from their politics. So that being said, basically you have a media, you have schools, you have education, you have an entire system in place where the Taiwan people are basically informed and told that they must side with the US over China on everything related to political and diplomatic issues. So even though the Chinese economy is doing much stronger, they always end up looking at that with suspicion. But what I anticipate eventually is this economy in Taiwan really is crashing. And if they don't see it now, what, you're, what, you saw, what I saw in Kaohsiung is going to happen all over the island if they really follow up on what the US is doing to them. And, China, and so by that being said, eventually, if there is a major downturn in the economy and many people lose jobs and many people go poor, they may soon discover that China is not as bad as they thought it was. And they may actually want to improve ties and improve trade because that would make a better situation for them. So the, the fact is, is the society of Taiwan is strongly anti-China. It's been that way for many decades, and it just is, and you can't really change that mindset. But what can't, what could happen is if there's a major crash in the local economy, they may discover that it's the Chinese and not the Americans who rescue them. I think it was Dr. Kissinger who said being an enemy of the United States can be dangerous. Being a friend of the United States can be fatal. As many have found out from the Shah of Persia through the leaders of Afghanistan, and who knows, one day soon, 
uh, the leaders of Ukraine and Taiwan. Tom McGregor, as always, a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for getting up so early in the morning.